ब्रह्मा गुरु विष्णु गुरु देव महेश्वर गुरु देव परम ब्रह्मा तस्मा श्री गुरवे नम चिन्मय ज्यालोक्यम सचराचरम दर्शित तस्मा श्री गुरवे नम माता पिता बंधुश्च सखा वेद्यामेव सार्व मम देव सार्व मम देव देव जय गुरु सहनावतु सहनावतु सह तेजस्वीतमस्तुमाशाई ओ शांति 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 So we're making our way to the 18th chapter, the final chapter. And what verse are we on this evening? We're on 17 for tonight. 17. Yasya naham krito bhavo he who is free from the egoistic notion whose intelligence is not tainted by good or evil though he slays these people he slays not nor is he bound by the action yes so here we are summarizing what is the solution for arjuna so remember our framing story we have the battle of kurukshetra and in the beginning arjun seems to be a man of action without doubts and krishna is his charioteer and he says take me in the middle of these two armies so i can see what the battle situation is so krishna drives the chariot and gives the first teaching look pay attention notice what's going on behold these armies now array and in the larger frame of this spiritually 90% of our healing is the willingness to see what's really going on our capacity for denial is monumental we have to initially accept what the circumstances are what's the definition of acceptance the acknowledgement of a material fact doesn't mean you have to like it but if you pretend what's going on isn't going on there's no hope of a solution 
So Arjun sees his cousins, his grandfather, his archery teacher. And what's going on is he has doubt and fear. It's what Swamiji used to call the disintegrated personality. So his swadharma, his basic bhasanas, he's a soldier. Nothing more righteous for a general than a or glorious than a righteous war. You know, love battle. But he sees himself as a person. He sees his cousins. These are people he was raised in the house with. These people. And he has doubt. So his swadharma is going one way. His feelings are going another way. And his intellect is going a third way. So what's the end result of all this? What does uh, Arjuna finally say he's going to do? Who remembers the story? Renounce. Huh? Renounce and go to the forest. He will not fight. Yeah, he will not fight. So this, the end result of this kind of doubt is paralysis. Then, frankly, we're just at the effect of circumstances. I don't have enough money to pay the mortgage. What am I going to do? Well, if you wait until the bank starts knocking on the door, you probably have fewer solutions. So, here in this verse at the very end, Lord Krishna is saying, now we've given you some solutions. We've integrated the personality. Now, understand, his solution is not to leave the battlefield and become a sannyasi. That may be for someone else, but not for him. That's contrary to his swadharma, his kshatriya. So let's parse this verse and see what are the elements that Krishna is giving to you and me about our lives. The first idea? He who is free from the egoistic notion. Yes. What do we mean by that? The one who thinks he's doing the doing. Who is the agent? The Bhakti Yoga people will say, Ishwara, the Lord is doing all the doing. Vedantins would say, Guna and Karma, the qualities of mind and the force of the past. This allows us to give up regret for the past and worry about the future. We renounce the sense of egoistic action. Another meaning of this, most of us act in order to fulfill a desire to resolve some sense of agitation or incompleteness. I can't stand what's going on, so I'm going to get this or get rid of that. Those are egoistic actions. Act out of joy. We act out of inspiration. We act out of creativity. We go toward these things. It's not about a happy bed, it'd be better if I can't stand this, give me that. Next idea. 
whose intelligence is not tainted by good or evil. So each of us will get our allotted dose of successes and failures, joys and sorrows. Mind you, this doesn't mean that the woman or the man of wisdom doesn't make worldly mistakes. But that doesn't mean it's not perfect. You may choose to make a decision and then it blows up in your face. Okay. In the late 70s, there was a senior Swami in the Chinmaya Mission, a fellow by the name of Dayananda. Some of you may have heard of him. He too was very famous. And there was a big kerfuffle between Chinmaya and Dayananda. I've heard many stories. At the end result, Dayananda left the mission and he took the vast majority of the Western disciples with it. Because he had been a guru. Swamiji never talked about it. Radhavda, he just went on doing his work. He had five heart attacks. Radhavda. went on doing his work. You folk who are in business, some of your projects will be successful and some will not. But you have a much better chance of succeeding if you practice karma yoga. So again, act. Take a risk. Jump. But make sure you're not saying, oh, I can't stand Chicago. It'll be better in California. Oh, California is working out. Maybe I'll go to New Orleans. Oh, New Orleans isn't working out. Maybe it'll be better in New York. Or those of you who may have visa issues, will you have to go back to India? Will you stay here? Proud of you. You'll do it. It'll be what it'll be. But our peace of mind our happiness, and what our mission is in life is not dependent on the externals. Ever. Next idea. Though he slays these people, he slays not. Yeah. So, Though here slay and being slain are simply metaphors for our actions and the experiences we have. So you close this deal on your business selling it. I have no idea whether it's going to blow up. What's going to happen with the economy? And neither do you. It'll be what it'll be. Or whatever our dreams and projects are. We just do our best and let God have the rest. But what Krishna is saying here is the self in me is never the act. I stand as the witness 
to the external circumstances of the world as the witness to this body, mind, intellect, and its particular actions. Being unconcerned with success and failure, gain and loss. Any thoughts on this? Question, please about your dharma and acting correctly. On it. Uh, there are <clears throat> there are serial killers who have believed that they're doing God's work on this earth by eradicating certain types of people or whatever. To them, that is arguably what they believe their dharma is. How would they know? Well. Usually, circumstances will let you know pretty quickly. Like the cops come and throw you in jail. But until you've reached the point of self-realization, we have these lists of dharmic activities, qualities of head, heart, and behavior. The yamas and niyamas are a good place to start. Or if you want to really reduce it down, ahimsa. Don't be a jerk. Don't hurt other people. And don't hurt yourself. Now, if you choose, for example, to go into the military, what do you do? Well, for example, in the U.S. military, you are pledged to obey all lawful orders. So if your superior officer or the president gives you an unlawful order, it's your duty to not obey. But it depends on your context. I don't know if this is useful. It is from a, from a standpoint of having all the facts. But I suppose when you are the person and you are not yet realized, it's hard to know what is truthful, like what is a fact versus what is your thought on it? Well, I mean, but we have guidelines in the tradition. And if you're not a religious person, all this stuff is pointless anyway. But what you could look at is for more life, more love, more creativity, more expression, more abundance for the benefit of myself and others at an individual basis. If it hurts somebody, if it's dishonest, if it harms the world, you might want to take a look at it. It may not be what your swadharma is. I don't think it's anybody's swadharma to act out of personal revenge and kill somebody. Now, if someone's a sociopath or something like that, they're mentally ill. And we should lock them up to protect them from their own future karma. That's how the Tibetans look at it. The Dalai Lama was once asked, do you, do you uh, uh, jail violent people? Well, we don't really jail them, but we do institutionalize them so that they do not perpetuate karma that's going to harm themselves. It's, it's not a passive way of looking at life. I don't know if that answers your question. It does, yeah. Always 
remembering we can only do our own yoga, not somebody else's. So hypothetical questions about somebody else's yoga, usually not too fruitful. Now the question is, are you having desires about killing people? No. But let's take a real live thing. Should you hang around in Orlando to take care of your mother? Or should you leave that environment and go do other things to which you were called? Now, to me, that's a real dilemma, yeah. isn't it? That's yeah. something very real. It's about you. Yeah, and that, that was, I mean, I gave an extreme example, but my question really underlying is, how do you know if you are aligning with your dharma? Or All you, know your dharma you can do is get quiet and do your best. And, as a rule, I mistrust fear. So, for example, the issue with your mother is one of the thoughts, if I don't take care of her, nobody else will. It was, yeah. yeah. Oh, aren't you powerful? <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe there's a little arrogance in there. 100%. Hmm? 100%. Swamiji used to say, graveyards are filled with indispensable people. You got hit by a bus tonight. Somehow, we're not time for your mother to go. Some situation would happen to take you. But you will know. So what I like to say is we have the loud voices of Raga and Vesha. And those loud voices can also be, can you see how righteous and good I am? I'm the most dutiful of the sons. That's a form of pride. I know that one. So we need to silence those, set them aside. You could write them on a piece of paper, get them from between your ears out of your head. Then, if I had all the money in the world and I was free to do what I really wanted, all the education, all the connections, what would I be doing? I think that's a more realistic Way to look at. And you'll know I have absolute faith in your higher power for you. I'm not smart enough to tell you. Is that useful? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. May Next. I also may I ask a question also? Certainly. Speak up. Your voice sounds a little soft tonight. Oh, uh, I should change the audio setting. One second. Yeah, is that better? Oh, much. Uh, it's about this part we read about intelligence not being tainted by good or evil. Uh, so I I I have been trying to practice uh, this idea, and one of the things that I run into is uh, the difference between your individual dharma and your dharma as part of a collective. So, for example, you might uh, view a certain quality like a commitment to excellence as part of your individual dharma, mm -hmm. but. In the collective, uh, so I'm not saying abstractly, this is a real situation that I have. And I feel that in the collective, uh, you know, frequently uh, there's a conflict between what I consider uh, the dharmic way to do something versus what, you know, the collective wishes to do. So, for example, I feel there is a strong tendency to go for the optics 
of you know what sounds grand and looks good rather than kind of having that humble commitment to excellence which demands a lot of effort okay so i find I yeah sorry please go on so first thing understand that many times we're convinced we're right one has to be very clear that many of us are very certain but that doesn't mean we're right so always the yogi must question her opinion yes i think i do that's good that's the first thing secondly you have your ideal so if your ideal is excellence for yourself endeavor to do that but we cannot change other people we can only suggest and work for that but we have to give up the results and i look at for example mahatma gandhi he was dead set against partition yeah that's a very good example yeah dead set against it he thought it would ruin the country the culture and set up a conflict between muslim and hindu that would be irreconcilable and that did happen i think yes yes and all the the suffering of the migrations on both sides and the violence and you know as much as he tried he fasted he prayed he didn't give up but he didn't get his way so just because we work for it doesn't mean we're going to get our way now sometimes on a much smaller scale i can only share with you what i did when i had my last church job my last boss i felt was unethical and i was unwilling indefinitely to work for an unethical priest so what i did is ask my intuition first of all i i had to get to the point where i was willing to stay i had to get to the point of that sama drishta and then my intuition said jim it's time for you to move on so i retired now i wouldn't be teaching vedanta today to the level i am if i still had my church job you know i had no idea this would happen this way but it felt right to do it and i'm a yogi so i had no fear i had no fear about leaving so i can't tell you what to do shweta yeah that's fine jim that was useful especially the example about partition was very powerful yeah because we keep running into these kinds of situations like when there's a collective goal and you're part of it uh, then there are all these uh, differences of opinion and yeah as my invitation to you is do not get discouraged continue to strive for excellence and be a voice for truth be a voice for the highest even if they think you're obnoxious by doing it yeah what i find happens is that you know then people sort of stop wanting to make you a part of the discussion because you're saying things that uh, maybe they don't want to hear trust your intuition you'll find a way through it i don't have an answer i don't have an answer but you will know if you're quiet and at peace this is this uh where krishna says 
uh, yoga is skill in actions, one of the things he says. But that means when we are as centered, as quiet, as detached as we can be, then we have the best chance of a good solution. Yes, that's very useful. Thanks, Jim. Good question. Very good question. All right, do we have another uh, uh, idea in this verse? Did we yes, get them all? Right. Nor is he bound by the action. Yes. So when we step back, give up our investment in the outcome of the event, we do our best and God does the rest. If we're successful, glory be to God. And if it fails, it's egg on God's face, not mine. I take no responsibility. I'm the unattached, uninvolved witness. Now, if I hurt or harm somebody or actually make a mistake, I do my best to clean it up. But that's different than going, oh, I'm such a terrible person. Why did I do that? You know, regret for the past. Yogi gives up regret for the past. All proud of it. All proud of it. All right. Next verse. Yanam Giyam Parikyata Jivita. Karma Chodana Karanam Karma Karteti Trividha Karma Samgraha Knowledge, the known and knower, form the threefold impulse to action. The organs, the action, the agent form the threefold basis of action. Okay, so now he's going to go into the threefold division of these dimensions of the human being. So let's look at the first three, knowledge. The known and the knower. So we have the knower, the means of knowledge, the knowledge, and the known. What is that triple factor? And then the second one? They form the threefold impulse to action, which is the organs, the action, the agent. So there's a doer, there's the instruments of activity, hands, feet, tongue, anus, and genitals, or mind and intellect actually here, and the action itself. So now this is the, the frame that he's going to start talking about. Going on, next verse. Yanam karma cha karta cha Trideva guna vedataha Procha te guna samkhyane Yathava chrutanya pi Knowledge, action and actor are declared in the science of temperaments or gunas to be of three kinds only. According to the distinctions of temperaments, hear them also duly. So, how we act, how we think, how we react our feelings in response to things. All of these are according to guna and karma. The qualities of our mind, tamas rajasattva, as that combines with the force of our past and the karmic environment in which we live. So uh, was it last week when the Tao went down a thousand points in one day? Yeah. yeah. So if you lost money on that day, Quality of your mind, 
your actions, what you invested in, but also the economic environment in which we all live. Same. So it's not just my individual past. So what happens, what actions I take, and the responses now are set forward within the frame of the free goodness. So let's see what he does with that. Going on. Sarva Bhutishu ye nekam Bhava Mavya Bhava Mavya Avibhaktam vibhakteshu tajjyanam vidhi satvikam. That by which one sees the one indestructible reality in all beings, undivided in the divided. Know that knowledge as satvik. So, the yogi with a satvik mind as she moves through the world. reconciles these two powerful statements. Brahma Satyam Jagan Mitya Brahman Consciousness alone is real. Jagan World of name and form. Mitya is not concrete, solid, separate. It's illusory. It's like a very long, very vivid dream. And then my favorite saying from Chandogya, Sarvam Kalvidam Brahma. Sarvam Idam. All this is shop talk for the phenomenal world. Kalu verily is Brahma. So like, for example, Shweta, all those people on committees in the administration, they are Krishna. Endeavor to relate to the God person in them. I love the movie Gandhi. It's one of my favorite films. And there's this wonderful um, a uh, couple really cool scenes. When you watch Gandhiji interacting with the British authorities, he doesn't scream and yell at them. He, he speaks really to their higher conscience. You mean, you think we're just going to get up and walk out of India? Yes. He keeps speaking to the highest in them, to the best of his ability. He provokes them. endeavors to call the most noble out of them. And it doesn't work all the time, believe me. There's that horrible scene where he, they all get shot. But another one of my favorite scenes, he's there with all the leaders of the, the emerging political force. And there is a servant there serving tea. And they're talking about high-level politics. And Gandhiji takes the tea tray from the servant. And he goes around and serves these other people like the servant would. Always in that position. Seva. This is a sacred mind. 
seeing the Lord in everyone. Seeing the Lord in every activity. Next idea. I think that was the whole thing in the verse, wasn't it? Yeah. All right, next verse. Um, Prithaktvena tu yajjyanam nana bhavan pudhakvidan veti sarveshu puteshu tajjyanam vidhi rajasam but the knowledge which sees in all beings various entities of distinct kinds and as different from one another, know that knowledge as rajasic or passionate. So the rajasic person, I'm over here, you are over there, I have my opinions, you have your opinions. I'm doing it right, you're doing it wrong. The world of human discord and conflict. Seeing otherness. Person who moves through the world with this knowledge, this view, is of a rajasic type. Now, I suspect most of us are not locked into one view or the other. Sometimes we do remember the truth and we can move through the world with a sattvic viewpoint. Sometimes we get triggered. We forget. Get identified. Start moving through the world with a rajasic. That was Arjun's problem. I'm Arjuna and the Kauravas are over there. It's rajasic temperament. Next verse. Yatu Krishna Vade Kasmin Karye Sakta Mahetukam Atat Vardhava Atat Vardhada Vadal Pamcha Tatta Masa Pudahitam but that knowledge which clings to one single effect as if it were the whole without reason, without foundation and truth and, and narrow, that is declared to be tamasic or dull. Yes. So this is when we have not only a misunderstanding, but a really wrong understanding of things. When I believe Vengeance is the answer. When I believe the destruction of my enemies is the answer. When I believe the person who lies, cheats, and steals and doesn't get caught is the smartest. This is a person with a tabasic knowledge view. Going on. Jim, do you mind if I turn on the light? Uh, can you reach behind you, can I? And there's a little switch there on the cord. Thank you. Better? Mm -hmm. Niyatam sangarahitam ragadveshata kittama afala prepsuna karma 
Yatat An action which is ordained, which is free from attachment, which is done without love or hatred by one who is not desirous of the fruit, that action is declared to be sattvic or pure. Yes. So here are the actions that we do that are appropriate to the situation, appropriate to our station in life. Again, if we question how we should act, take a look at the yamas and niyamas of Raja Yoga. If we want to look at speech, I'm very fond of that Buddhist paradigm. Is it truthful? Is it necessary? Is it kind? Is it timely? That's a pretty good test of speech. We talked about being able to practice turning our mind away from habituated negative thinking. All of these are forms of action. And again, uh, Pandit Rajmani, when he does his commentary on the Yoga Sutra, essentially says you can reduce all of the yamas and the yamas to a himsa. We just keep that in mind. Do no harm. Not only to other people, but to yourself, this does. That's a sattvic view of the world. It also means we are not at the effect of the indulgent tendency of the mind. A lot of new agey people get confused. I just want to be free. I just want to go with the flow. And they're not really responding to the deep intuition. They're tyrannized by their likes and their dislikes. And that's not freedom. It's not freedom. So we have to at first get beyond those screaming voices of Raga and Vesha. Then that is your goal. Next one. Because if you're tired, I can make a small. No. Thank you. Yattu kame psuna karma saham karena vapunaha Kriyate bahulayasam tadraja samudharutam. But that action which is done by one, longing for desires or gain, done with egoism or with much effort, is declared to be rajasic or passionate. Yes. So the idea where we approach life, getting what I want will make me happy. Getting rid of what I hate will make me happy. The problem that I have is people, places, things, and conditions. It's the wrong people if they would just go away and leave me alone. I've got the wrong husband. I've got the wrong co-workers. I've got the wrong family. Places. I'm living in the wrong place. I'm working in the wrong place. Things. It'd be better if I had a different car. It'd be better if I had different clothes. If I had a fancy watch. If I had more jewelry. Conditions. Change in vocation. Uh, Change in your marital status. 
change in your career. Doesn't mean we're not following our heart's deepest desires. But you know when there's a quality of insistence, I have to get away from something. I'm suffering. That's a rajasic mind state. Next one. Anubandham chayam himsa manaveksha chapausham mohadara pyate karma yattat amasa muchate. That action, which is undertaken from delusion without regard for the consequence, loss, injury, and ability is declared to be tamasic. Yes. Yes. So you are in an environment, uh, what was that movie called? The Great Short? Is that right? The Big Short. Big Short. And all these people are working in industry where they know their actions are going to hurt people. But greed dulls them to the fact that what they're doing is injurious. That's tamasic. Or I'm thinking of a particular politician who on the first day of office said to his cabinet, your job every day is to help me vanquish my enemies. That's to ask. And it's it masquerades as all sorts of hiding a bad motive behind a good one. I'm just, I think I'm helping them. I need to, they need to be taught a lesson. It's not a good one. But here, even the scripture talks about insa, doing harm, doing violence. When was there a question over there? There is, but I don't know if it's going to just say, like, ask it. Ask it. Well, my, my question is like, doing violence, vanquishing enemies, that feels very passionate to me from a Western perspective, as opposed to dull. Um, why is it bombastic rather than just like, Well, he calls it doing harm. Okay. But it is, it does have elements of grudges. And these three gunas, few of our actions are discreetly one or the other. Oftentimes they're combined. This is math, not territory. Is that helpful? Yes, thank you. But another way of acting is when I don't do anything, when action should be undertaken. And that's also Tomas, that's dull. All right, next one. Mukta Sangona Hamvadi Rityut Sahasa Manvitaha Sityat Sityo Nivirkara Nirvikara Karta Satvika Uchate An agent who is free from attachment, non egoistic, endowed with firmness and enthusiasm, and unaffected by success or failure, is called Satvik or Pure. Yes. So these qualities of head and heart are an indication you're in the flow of life. Let's look at them specifically. The first one. An agent who is free from attachment. Yes. 
earlier when we were studying karma yoga, thy right is to work alone, never to its fruits. It's all we get in life is the work, never the outcome. And with the clear understanding that every form, without exception, is impermanent. But yet, with no attachment to the outcome. Next idea. Non egoistic. Yes. Giving up the idea that I, the individual, am doing the doing. It is being done through me. Uh, in the text Tripura Rahasya, uh, there's the great story. I'm going to read if I can remember their names. Can't think of it. The queen and the king, and they both decide to do yoga, and she attains self-realization very quickly. He goes into the forest to, to perform ritual. Anybody remember their names? Chudala and Shikidvaja. Yes, Chudala and Shikidvaja. Yes, thank you. Oh, great. So, in the Sanskrit, when she decides that, oh, she wants to help out her husband. The Sanskrit says, the desire to acquire Siddhis arose in her. Passive voice does not say she decided to acquire Siddhis. It's a subtle, subtle difference there. Subtle difference. So the yogi stands back and the desire to do this or the desire to do that arises. And you go. But that's very different. But I want to do it because this is going to make me important, happy, etc. Next idea. Endowed with firmness and enthusiasm. Yes. So, success in everything in life is the result of steadfastness. You don't let the little pinpricks of disappointment or apparent failure get in the way and burn what the vision is. And enthusiasm. I don't what's the centric word for that? Sahas, Dritya Sahas, Manvita. Drit, drit, Dritya is firmness. Yes. Yeah. So that's probably the yeah. Sahas firmness. is courage. Sahas is courage, yeah. But the word in English of enthusiasm is a very interesting word. It, uh, the root comes from a Greek root, Theus. What is Theus? And Theus. God, God within. God. So once person who's enthusiastic is acting from that God place within. Isn't that a wonderful word? Mm -hmm. What it means. We say enthusiasm, but it's spelled enthusiasm. So always the sense. I love what the Master Jesus said. I myself do no thing. 
It is the Father within that doeth the work. Next piece. And unaffected by success or failure. Yeah. All we get is the work. Let go of the outcome. And when the task or the adventure is over, turning to the next thing. Let it all pass through. And if we act in this way, without what we call in yoga, chintya. Chintya here, I know in Hindi it means worry, doesn't it? Yeah, chinta is worry. Yeah. In Sanskrit, chintya means after the fact rumination over an experience, either positively or negatively. Oh, I did so well, blah, 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 blah. blah. Oh, I, I, I messed up. I should have done yada, 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 yada. You know that mind state? That's how vasana gets sown. So here, the yogi, when she stays in the now, gives up concern for success and failure. Do your best. God have the rest. Go on to the next thing. Then it doesn't leave a vasana. And this leads us to freedom. In time, we exhaust our vasanas without creating new ones. In time, if we practice like this, the mind will naturally start to turn inward. And realization of self and even more abidance in the self becomes easier and easier. Is that all the pieces of that one? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's do one more. Well, it does end with such person is called sattva. Yes, that's a sattva mind. Yes. Ragi karma phala prepsu lupto him sattva koshu chihi harsha shokan vita karta rajasa parikirtitaha Passionate, desiring to gain the fruits of action, greedy, harmful, impure, Full of delight and grief. Such an agent is said to be rajasic or passionate. Yes. So again, the mind state of the bogi who practices bhoga. Bhoga is the philosophy. I want to be happy. The way to be happy is to satisfy as many desires as possible way to be free from misery is to avoid unpleasant circumstances. The one with the most cash and prizes wins. Better get out of my way. Because I'm on my way out. That's the rajasic. And it leads to suffering in the end. All right. We'll do one more. That one was fast. We'll do the Tamasic one. Ayukta prakrita stabdha Shatho neshkriti kolasa Vishadi dirgha sutri cha Karti tamasa uchate Unsteady, vulgar, unbending cheating, malicious, lazy, despondent, and procrastinating. Such an agent is said to be tamasic or dull. Yes. It's pretty clear, pretty straightforward. And we've all met people like that in the workplace. 
We may have had times in our own lives where we're shut down. Now, this word lazy, another form of that is sloth, you hear. There was a fellow in the fifth century in Asia Minor called Ibagrioch the Solitary. Isn't that a great name? He's the fellow who came up with the seven deadly sins. Westerners are frequently familiar with that. Who's heard of the seven deadly sins? Okay. So sloth is one of his seven deadly sins. In Greek, it's accedia, A-C-C-E-D-I-A. But the way he broke it down is not laziness, but sadness coupled with discouragement. And I find that definition more useful. Because if I don't do what I need to do through the day or in my life, I just feel stuck. If I just say, oh, I'm just being lazy. Why am I getting up a, an hour earlier and doing blah, 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 blah. Who's had thoughts like that in their life? You know, I have never found out a useful way to approach it. But I found, okay, am I sad about something? Let me, let me deal with that. Am I discouraged? Why am I discouraged? Well, I have a misunderstanding of some stuff spiritually. You wrestle with that. I found that that became much more useful rather than using the word lazy. I don't know if that's helpful. Good old Ubabrio, he's a good guy. But you can see that feeling of being shut down. That's Tomasa. Now, going all the way back to our teaching on the Gunas, we had a whole chapter on the Gunas. Understand that you're not likely to be able to move the mind, the agent, the view, the knowledge from Thomas to Sattva. Mind doesn't work that way. Usually, the antidote to the Tomasic mind is to move from Thomas into Rajas. So the shut down, depressed, lethargic, stuck mind, you stimulate it with activity. You stimulate it with desire. There's that joke. Many of you probably heard when the going gets tough, the tough go shopping. There's some truth to that if you're in a Tomasic mind state. Better try cleaning your house. I can't get myself to do that. Try cleaning one corner. Try answering 10 emails, not all thousand of them, but you've got stuff in your inbox. Are you one of those kind of people who has an inbox like that? <laughs> Do a little bit, do a little bit. Move the mind from Thomas into Rajas. Oh, I need to lose 30 pounds. And I'll never be able to do that. You know, well, you start by park at the far end of the parking lot when you go to the market. Just walk that little bit extra. Can you take one flight of stairs instead of the elevator? Little things, little things. Move the mind from Thomas into activity, from lethargy into activity. Then we move the rajasic mind into sadhana. So many people 
when they're shut down, depressed, lethargic, think that, oh, if I just meditate, it'll go away. Probably you won't spend your half an hour meditating. You may spend your half an hour either asleep or worried. Who's had that experience? Yeah. It's not a fruitful way to do it. Okay, we'll end here. What verse are we on for next week? 19. 19. Om Pur Namada Pur Namidam Pur Nat Pur Namudachate Pur Nasya Pur Namadaya Pur Nameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari Om Jim, I misspoke, it's 29.